Hello friends, happy Wednesday. Enjoying my Wednesday pipe, my old trusty basket pipe that's been with me for 30 plus years. And I am enjoying some St. Bruno Flake. Uh, and just as I was getting ready to do this, the furnace kicked in and I got distracted and I'm probably going to have to reload because I'm, I'm more than halfway through this wall. But, uh, yeah, this has been in my category of afternoon smokes. I'm, I'm trying to mix it up a little bit, have something different in the afternoon, just for fun, just to keep my palate uh, active. So I hope you're all having a great week. Um, a couple things I wanted to talk about today. Uh, one is just... Ah, uh, work. <laughs> If, if, it, if it was fun, they wouldn't call it work, right? So, we've been going through some, uh, some changes, and they're all good. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no negatives. There's no job loss or anything associated with this. But we're, we're going through changes, and I find myself sometimes... Uh, you know, I'm a creature of habit. I like my routines. And something changes, and my initial reaction is to... Well, I, I, I get sick about it, you know. I, I don't want the change to happen. I, I'd much rather just continue on doing what I've been doing. But, you know, sometimes change is necessary for survival. Um, I forget who made the quote. It was one of the generals during the Iraq War. He said that... If you don't like change, you're going to really hate irrelevance, um, which is true. You know, change is, is, is part of our lives. And, you know, it's funny, I, I don't believe people really understand it when they say I'm afraid of the change. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been managing people for a long time, and uh, I've been managed by people for a long time. And I've been through many, many, many of these sorts of, uh, let's call them reorganizations, because that's essentially what they are. And what you fear is not the change. It's the uncertainty. You know, and, and I, I, again, do not remember who this quote is, is, is uh, attributed to, but I thought it was a very uh, accurate uh, description of, of change. They said, uh, you don't fear change, you fear the uncertainty. It's the trapeze artist between the trapeze. So you're, you're swinging from the one, and you're not afraid to be on the other trapeze. You know, that that's not the other trapeze bar, whatever those things are called that they swing from. You're not afraid to be on that other bar. You're afraid of letting go of this one and sailing along and hopefully catching the other one. It's that time between that you don't understand and you're not 100% certain of, that you're afraid of. And we don't like uncertainty. We, we like to know what we're doing. We like to, to be certain. So, yeah, that's, that's, what we're, that's where the fear of change comes from. And it's important to keep that in mind, I think, because I've learned over the years that it's far better to get focused on what's coming and work with it, you know, to, to incorporate it, to begin to understand how your roles are going to change, how you're going to need to change your interactions with, with the given set of people, and how you can continue to be productive in that new world that's coming. And I think that's, that's rather apropos of our current uh, situation here with the elections coming up. You know, we don't know what's going to happen, and I think there's quite a few people right now that are at a fairly high level of anxiety over this on, on both sides. And, you know, but it's not going to be the end of the world either way. You know, I know what I prefer, and I vastly prefer it to the, to the alternative. But, you know, we've been through this before, and we'll go through it again. And whatever happens, we're going to come out the other end, and we're going to, we're going to be just fine. Um... I watched a video this morning, and I won't go into why, why I watched it this morning, which is a story in and of itself, 
but uh, it was from our friend, uh, the Holy Smoke and Pipe Padre, who I have not watched in a long time. You know, Holy Smoke and Pipe Padre tends to do these really long form videos, uh, usually 45, 50 minutes, um, and I honestly just uh, don't have the time to keep up on, on those kinds of things. You know, occasionally they're good, but uh, that's what his videos have typically been. Now, he's been, he's been making them much less frequently. Uh, but I, I have not watched him in, in well over a year. But I just happened to start watching this one this morning and uh, got sucked in, and it was an excellent video. I'm going to link to it below because he he did a really great job of talking about the upcoming elections. His perspective, you know, and he, he openly admits it that early on in the video, he says that, you know, I'm a liberal. And uh, he says, so take this as coming from from someone with that perspective. But he did a really nice job of kind of breaking down um, what's going on. And he emphasized something that, that I, you know, I've kind of been pointing to it for a while now, and you're probably tired of hearing, hearing people point it out. But, you know, the world is changing in a very strange way. And, you know, the way he put it is we're basically being... Yeah, someone that, that has a conservative idea is immediately labeled as a bad person. You know, they're a racist, they're a Nazi, they're, they're whatever. And that's not true. They're, they're good people, and there's good people on both sides. Uh, Got to be careful. I, I know that quote got somebody in trouble. <laughs> uh, there's not good Nazis. <laughs> there's not good racists. But there, there's, there's good conservatives and there's good liberals, and neither one is 100% right. So we got to get past this idea that, you know, if you're a conservative, you're you're a racist and a Nazi, and a, and a homophobe, and if you're a liberal, you're a radical left-wing socialist that wants to bring uh, bring about a communist regime in the U.S. Yes, there are those extremes, but they're not most of the people on either side, and we got to get past that. We're letting our we're letting those thoughts dominate us, not just in our own personal thoughts, but in, in how the news media is, is presenting things and, you know, how social media... You know. We got squeaky wheels, and the squeaky wheels are getting heard. Uh, the polls bear it out. This is not the case for most of America. You know, most of America does not agree with either of those extremes. And if they did, I don't think this would be a very nice country. So, how do we get past that? Well, you know, so I, I, as you've heard me say many times, try to understand the other side. Try to find out where the facts come from. Find out where your own facts come from. Understand, and I'm going to use this word loosely, understand your enemy as well as you understand your ally. Um, feelings are not good for logic but right now there's a lot of feelings flying around so try to understand the feelings you know they might help you when you're talking to somebody that disagrees with you and I understand you feel that way and if I felt that way I'd be just as upset as you are but these are the reasons I don't feel that way you know you, you can talk about it that way and still be logical anyway there's, there's an election coming up we gotta vote I have no idea what the outcome is going to be, but whatever happens, let's make sure that after this is all over, God only knows when it's going to be over, that we can at least stand up together and say we, we played our part, and now we're going to have to uh, move forward in the new world, um, do all the things that we need to do to continue to be happy, productive citizens of this country. And if we feel that we've jumped track, we'll work to go back to the track we think is right. Um, it's worked for 250 years now, to, close to 250 years. Um, it, it'll, it'll keep working. The only thing that's going to ruin it is if we break down ourselves and stop trusting in that system. So let's hope that doesn't happen. All right, that's my ramble for the day. This Friday night, we're going to be telling ghost stories. 
and we, I had a meeting with uh, three of the four guys that I'm hoping are going to be able to make it on Friday night. And uh, we, we did a Zoom test last night. It was great. I mean, these guys are, it was funny. I was thinking that, uh, you know, I'm taking time out of these guys' evenings and we're going to try to get this done as quickly as possible. Uh, we wound up talking for close to an hour and uh, just just so much fun. So, such such great personality, great people in this community. And uh, these are some shining examples of that. And they got some great stories. So we're going to have a lot of fun on Friday. I'm going to turn the lights down. We're going to we're going to tell ghost stories, and we're going to try to uh, try to creep one another out, just like the kids sitting around the campfire at, uh, at the Boy Scout camp. So I hope you'll join us for that. I think it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Uh, there'll be a notification coming out later today for that. Uh, probably will be out by the time this this video goes up. And uh, one last point on that. I've been. I've been sorting through a lot of technical things to make this work, so it's not trivial to incorporate Zoom into a YouTube live stream. Uh, I know people do it. Uh, a lot of times when you see Zoom you know, on YouTube, it's after the fact, and we're going to actually have it happening live. And that's, uh, that's a bit harder to do. The audio quality may not be up to the normal standards, and I know my normal audio standards are kind of low compared to some. So I apologize for that in advance, but I think we're going to be okay. Uh, I've got to get some more audio equipment. Is the bottom line. I got to, I got to invest in a mixing board and some other things, and I'll I will do that because I want to be able to do this in the future. I think there's a lot of things we can do with the Zoom technology. Uh, one thing I mentioned last night is the idea of maybe having a uh, pipe repairman roundtable where we'll get you know, a bunch of guys that, that are all actively doing pipe repair work and just have them chat for a while, chat with one another, take questions from the, from the live stream chat. Uh, yeah, I thought that might be fun. Uh, another thing that came up was the possibility of, you know, maybe there's some guys out there that don't want to spend an hour with me one-on-one, -on -one, but they'd be happy to be part of a group discussion. So maybe we can get four of those kind of guys together and uh, just have them chat amongst themselves, chat with me, uh, and again, interact with, with you guys in the live stream. So we're going to see how this evolves, but I'm excited about it. I, I think it's, uh, I think this Friday is, is going to be a big step forward for us, and uh, again, I, I hope that technically it works out, but I'll apologize in advance if there's less than, you know, top quality audio in, in, in this call. But it, it'll be fun regardless. So please join us Friday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard, uh, Ghost Stories. I think you're going to have a good time. All right, folks, i got to get back to work. Have a great Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing you on Friday night.